Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today I wanted to take a look at using Pat Winlink over the mesh network in a peer-to-peer -peer configuration. If you're not familiar with mesh, you can check out this website. It's the Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network and I'll leave a link to this site down in the description below. Now let's see if we can configure Pat to work over the mesh in a peer-to-peer -peer format. Okay, so let's open up the terminal window and let's issue a command pat configure. This will bring us into our pat configuration file. First thing we want to do is come down to this line right here where it says listen. And we're going to enter in quotation marks telnet. Then we're going to keep scrolling down the file and we're looking for this information here, Telnet with the listen address of 8774. Now that's the port number, but that's information we're going to need when we try to connect to my station in a peer-to-peer -peer format. All right, so now that we've made those changes, let's exit out of this by pressing Control X, Y, and Enter. Now we'll go ahead and start PAT with PAT HTTP. You'll notice we have something new here that says listening for incoming traffic on Telnet. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up my PAT GUI interface and I'm going to compose a message. I'm going to send this to my buddy N0JPD and we'll just put test for video. This is a peer-to-peer -peer message. Now if you only wanted it to be sent peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, let's say maybe you intended on uh, leaving this message sitting here for him but you might make a RF connection, you can check peer-to-peer -peer only and it wouldn't go out unless you have a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection with who you're sending the email to. So I'll go ahead and check that and post that to the outbox. So you can see that message is here in the outbox. Now let's head over to Andy's machine and see if we can retrieve that message. Okay, so here we are on Andy's machine. You can see his call sign here, and I'm gonna make a connection back to my machine over the mesh network. So let's say action, connect. We're gonna start by selecting the Telnet alias. And then we're going to come in here, right after the at sign. I'm going to highlight the cms.winlink.org, and I'm going to replace that with my IP address. And then remember that port number that we saw. It's not 8772, but 8774. Once we've got that finished up, let's go ahead and click the connect button. And let's look at our inbox. And there you can see that his station has pulled that email from my station during the peer-to-peer -peer connection. Before we wrap this up, let's take a look at a way to automate this process. So real quick, I'm going to compose a, another email to Andy. Okay, and we've got test for automation in the subject line and test two for the video in the body of the message. So let's go ahead and post that and we'll leave that sitting there. Let's go ahead and jump back to his machine now. Okay, now we're back on Andy's machine and you can see uh, right here his call sign, N0JPD. I'm going to choose Action and Connect again. And you'll see that information is still filled out here where we made the connection a while ago. What we wanna do is copy this line right here. So we'll highlight it, right click, and say Copy. Now let's head over to the terminal window. What we're going to use here is cron or a cron job. If you're not familiar with cron jobs, definitely do a YouTube search. It's a super convenient way to automate tasks on the Raspberry Pi or any Linux distribution. So we'll say cron tab dash E for edit. And if you've never run cron before, when you first uh, hit the return key, you may see something that asks you about which editor you want to use. I'm using Nano. Uh, seems to be one of the easier ones to use. 
So let's go ahead and hit the return key. All right, and we're just going to start scrolling down past these comments. And you'll see he has one cron job set there for a reboot at 4 o'clock each morning. Okay, we're going to start with a star and a forward slash. Now I'm going to set this to run every minute by entering one right here. If I was going to do this and leave it running all the time, I wouldn't want it running every minute. I would probably choose every five to ten minutes to have this run. That would probably be sufficient. But for the demo of this video and to speed things up, we'll use every minute. All right, so we'll say every minute, and then let's give it four more stars with a space in between each star. Now let's say forward slash USR forward slash Ben forward slash and we're going to say pat connect. And then we're going to paste in what we copied from the previous screen. And you know, come to think of it, I think I'm going to change that to every two minutes over here instead of every minute. And then we're going to say control X, Y, and enter to get out of that. Now, let's go ahead and jump back to my screen so we can watch that connection happen automatically. So here we are on my machine in the outbox, and there's the email that we sent. And if you'll watch the clock right up here, when it changes to 50, you should see the automation happening in the black window at the bottom, and you should watch this disappear out of the outbox. At some point in the future, I want to take a look at peer-to-peer -peer connections over 2 meter RF. But for now, we've got it working with a mesh. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.